Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Friday Gear Show. Now we're back in lockdown here in France and that means we can't go out climbing and filming as much as we normally would do. But don't panic, because we've got a plan. What we're going to do today is to look back at one of our older episodes. Uh, we're up here to do the classic Cosmiques Arete, which is a wonderful one day Chamonix hit. Now there's often lots of comments that come up down below the videos and we get sent stuff on Instagram and other social media. So today we're going to look at some of those questions, discover some gear talking points and hopefully cover some more in-depth tips. Okay, so this is the first section I wanted to talk about, and it's all about crampons. Now, as a team, we were using different versions of crampons on this day. I had a pair of fast and light crampons from Edelrid. Now, instead of using the usual metal structure running down the middle of the crampons, these use cord. Now, although this phenomenally improves the weight, there are some disadvantages. Having that cord in the middle means it's not quite as stiff on your boot as a metal section crampon, like the Petzl Vasque, for example. Now, this is absolutely fine when you're climbing moderate terrain or ridge bashing like we were doing, but the second things get steep or icy where you really need to kick your feet in, having that fast and light flexi crampon isn't as good. Now, Hugo and Teresa were both using the more traditional metal crampons, so they had to put up with the extra weight, but when things got techy, they definitely had a better crampon to place their feet with. Okay, let's crack on. We're at the first abseil, where there's a bit of a queue, so we're just waiting, but look at the view. You can do this section a number of different ways. You can abseil it, you can down climb it. The way we're going to approach it is I'm going to lower Hugo and Teresa down. So they're going to sort of half down climb, half be lowered. And then I'm going to down climb the section afterwards. We're just doing this for speed. Uh, we want to keep moving when we're up here and rigging a whole abseil, pulling it through, doing all that kind of faff is just not as efficient. So that's the plan. <laughs> Boom. Okay, so abseiling versus lowering off or down climbing. Often in an alpine climb, when you get to one of those situations, you have multiple choices. And it's all about picking the right one for the kind of terrain and the group that you're with. With these abseils, there's two of them. The first one sort of traverses into the second. It's not just a simple straight down, re-rig the abseil. If we were to have abseiled that top section, we would have had to have untied, clipped into the anchor, re-threaded the rope, abseiled the section, pulled the rope back through, and then gone on to the second abseils. There's a lot of faff involved in that. Our method was to lower Hugo and Teresa down, and then I down climb down after them. That means we don't really need to rejig the ropes, and it's a much quicker process. The second abseil, that's a straight down one, and we set that up like we normally would, with an extended ATC belay device on a sling and a prussic on the rope. I don't want to go into that in too much detail because it is complicated, but there's an abseil video linked down below if you want more details. When you come onto these sections, think ahead, think of the abilities of your group, think about how quickly you want to move through that section and make a decision on what you're seeing as you climb. Or not that lad. Right, from this angle of shot, you can clearly see down to what I'm doing with the gear on this section. So in this little clip, I'm using a nut. Now a nut is a bit of metal with a wire loop attached to it that you put into a crack and then attach a quick draw to that wire and then you attach the rope to the quick draw. What you're looking for is cracks that go down into a V or constrict. That way you can put your nut in, find the point where it stops and is stuck, give it a little tug, clip it and move on. Now sometimes with gear, especially if the leader is a bit terrifying, that nut can get stuck in the crack and you use something called a nut key to wiggle it or bash it out. Why don't we take a nut key whilst alpine climbing? Well, you got an ice axe, right? Which is the perfect nut key. So don't bring a nut key when you alpine climb. So 
So we've just come up the steep little bit uh, and throughout this route we've been putting in gear as we go but occasionally in sections like this you can just flick the rope around, terrain belay and then just move through nice and quick. So I'm going to go around this corner. We are almost at the hard bit of the route, which is sort of right at the very end of the route, uh, so it kind of can catch you unawares. Little slabby section, step with a plummeting drop beneath you, and then a last little gully up onto the ridge line. So we're sort of three sections off being done. Now at this point I should stop and say that in this video we're a bunch of mates going out climbing and this is not a technique video. If you're unsure of anything make sure you get a qualified alpine mountaineering guide to get you through and teach you the basics. When you rock climb, generally you are pitching a section of rock and that means that you have a bee layer and a leader. The leader climbs the section of rock builds an anchor or clips into the bolt and then brings the second or third climber up to join them. Now when we alpine climb, sometimes we are moving together and that involves us moving across the terrain with a few bits of gear and that's either nuts and cams or you're flicking the rope and that way you can continue to move. It's not stop and starting like when you pitch. Now with the Cosmic Sorette you do a mixture of all the different techniques. So for most of this video we're moving together, as you can see we're continuing to move and then we stop and pitch it for the crux section. Again it's all about picking the right technique for the terrain that you're faced with. Now this is a complicated subject and we've actually got a special video on it we did during the Arcteryx Alpine Academy with Arcteryx athlete Stian and he goes into more depth on these principles. I wanted to bring it up though because you can see us changing between these different methods throughout the video and that's why we're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Is it like climbing in Scotland? All the eyes and snow. Say that again. <laughs> no. This gully near the end of the route is fairly steep and it can be icy and you can see Hugo here using his ice axe and sometimes his hands to climb that section. But why didn't he take two ice axes? With two axes you're looking at more technical terrain. If it's consistently above about 50 degrees and it's hard snow or ice you do want to be using two axes. But obviously with two axes there's more weight to carry, there's more things to take up and if you're trying to be quick on a route then that's going to hinder you. It being quite a hot summer there wasn't a huge amount of ice on the route so we knew that one ice axe would do for that kind of terrain. But that's all good, how do you know what the conditions are before you get on a route? It's all about research. Start with a guidebook, read all the notes, find those tricky little sections and then go further. Read blogs, watch videos. Always err on the side of caution of course, there's nothing worse than being in technical hard terrain without the correct equipment and some of this does come down to experience. So if you're just starting off, maybe take two for most things and you'll quickly learn when that's unnecessary. So I said there was a little sting in the tail of this route and it's the ladder behind me which I genuinely think is one of the most frightening things on this route. It's rickety, it's metal, you've got crampons on and uh, you can't clip it, that's just cheating. So uh, if this is the last time I see you, Hugo, you've been like a dad to me. <laughs> I'm gonna clip it. Well done. <laughs> Right, coming up the ladder at the end of the route and you'll notice throughout the video that all three of us are wearing the same set of clothes and this is all to do with layering and layering systems. So you could start as I did in this video with a base layer, a long sleeve breathable layer, I then had a softer jumper on and then my hard shell. You are at 3,800 meters but it's the middle of summer and it is pretty warm. So why did I wear a hard shell? Well I wear a hard shell mainly to protect myself from the wind. Also as you can see from the video there's a lot of snow around and snow is wet. So if you're pressing yourself against it or leaning against a bit of snow that can quickly soak through your layers and again make you cold. It's a personal thing, it's something that actually I've changed throughout the years as I've been climbing but it's a system that now I'm happy with. And if you want to know more about layering systems, again there's a link down below to some more in-depth videos. Alright, let's finish this off. I said I got a surprise, carried all the way up the route. Chocolate. Oh, wow. We've got beers. Nice. We've got Alpine beers, Thank number you. one. You got Trump. Hugo. We're gonna get drunk. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thank you very much guys, appreciate it. You got, you got a bottle? Sure. I haven't got a bottle open, I haven't. Yeah. 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 What a man. Greece. Cheers. Woo! 
Okay, beers for everyone at the top of that route. That was finished, the full video is linked down below if you wanna watch all of that epic day. Hopefully that's gone in depth on a few more of your questions and we've examined and looked at a few different techniques. Again, always get a guide if you're unsure of anything. There's a link down below to our alpine climbing selection on the Epic TV shop and do comment below if you enjoyed the video and you wanna see more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.